One of the major concept that a Bitcoin developer needs to understand is the way in which Bitcoin's peer-to-peer -peer network operates. As we know, Bitcoin is a decentralized system. There is no central server and different nodes, different players in the system communicates with each other using a peer-to-peer -peer protocol. Over here at Bitcoin nodes, we can see a list of nodes and their IP addresses. And by the end of this tutorial, I will show you how you can reach those nodes and how you can effectively communicate with them. Now, the Bitcoin protocol describes a method for constructing and parsing messages. And it is quite important to grasp these uh, methods. Basically, a Bitcoin specific information can be represented as a message. A Bitcoin transaction, for example, traverse the network as a peer-to-peer -peer message. Over here, we can see that Alice has a block. And this block is basically nothing more than just some binary code. Over here, it is represented in hexadecimal. And we can send and receive this type of binary code using the network, using our peer-to-peer -peer network. Now, Alice need to send this binary code to Bob. And if Alice construct the code in accordance to the Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer message format, Bob will be able to pass this binary code and he will realize that this code represents a Bitcoin uh, message or in this case, a block message. Now, when learning Bitcoin protocol, uh, Bitcoin.org will be your best friend. The documentation on this site is quite extensive and in this video, I will use it quite often. Over here, you can see a list of Bitcoin's peer-to-peer -peer messages and we can see how each message should be constructed. For this tutorial, I choose to work on the ping message. Ping is a simple way to make sure that the remote node is still connected and you might have already used some uh, type of pinging tools in order to test your own network at home by sending a ping request to a well-known uh, server like Google, for example. Now, this ping message isn't that interesting in the context of the Bitcoin protocol, but it is a very easy way to construct and to understand how a Bitcoin message looks like. And it will be a good place to start. Later, we will create some more advanced messages and see how they work. But in this video, I'm going to stick to a simple ping message. Now, I can find a documentation for this message on the Bitcoin.org website, the developer reference, and I will refer to this uh, documentation throughout the video. Um, I will leave all the links in the description below. But one of the most important things that we can already see here is that every Bitcoin message is made out of two main parts, the header and the payload. And while the structure of the payload is different for every different message type, for example, the structure of a block message will be different to the structure of a single transaction, the header of both type of messages will be the same or it will look the same. It will, of course, contain a different information, but it will contain the same fields. So every Bitcoin message will have a header with a similar structure, but it will have a different type of information and it will have a different payload. And you will see how it works um, in a few seconds in our code. So in my code, I'm going to start by creating the payload for the message. And the payload is basically just one field. And this field is the nonce field. And as we saw, this field is basically a random number. So I'm going to start by importing the random library. And now for the payload itself, I'm just going to create this nonce field. And this field is, of course, a random uh, number. So I'm going to use the random library. And the method is get random bits. And it should be 8 bytes long or 64 bits long. 
And now I need to take this um, 64 bits long random uh, number and I need to convert it into bytes. So I'm going to start to convert into bytes. And as you can see from the table, it should be eight byte long. The byte order should be little. And this is something that is not unique only to Bitcoin. In many networking protocols, you can see that there is a requirement to use the little endian byte order. In the Bitcoin protocol, there are a few exceptions to this rule, and we will see them when we reach those exceptions. But as a rule of thumb, whenever you need to specify the byte order uh, for networking in the Bitcoin protocol, you should use little endian. Now we can also see that it's supposed to be an unsigned integer. So for signed, it of course should be equal to false. And this is it basically. This is the payload for my ping message. This one field, this nonce field. Now I can move on and start to work on my header. Now the first field in the header is this starting field. Sometimes it is referred to as the magic number or the magic byte. And this um, field basically tells the remote machine what is the network or the protocol to which this specific message belongs to. Now, because we are using Bitcoin's main network, we are going to use the magic byte F9BEB4D9. And this magic number is specific to Bitcoin's main network. There are different magic numbers or magic bytes to Bitcoin's testnet or to Namecoin or other um, protocols that are similar to the Bitcoin uh, protocol. But again, we are just using the main Bitcoin protocol, the main network. So we are going to use this specific um, magic byte. And of course, right now it is in its hexadecimal form. So we need to convert it to bytes using the method byte from hexadecimal or bytes from hex. The next field is the command name field. And this field is just the name of the message that we wish to send. In my case, it should be the ping message, but it can also be transaction, block, or any other message that is recognized by the Bitcoin protocol. And the command name should be converted into bytes using the ASCII table. And then it should be padded with zeros to get a total of 12 bytes. So bytes from hexadecimal, it should be ping. I'm going to encode it using UTF-8 and convert the result again into hexadecimal. And now I need extra eight bytes. And each one of those bytes is of course zero. So zero, zero, time eight. And this is it. Ping encoded using UTF-8 to get its ASCII form, followed by um, A time zero to get a total of 12 bytes. This is the command name. The next field is the payload size field. And the name is quite self-explanatory. It is basically the size of the payload itself. We basically tell the remote machine, you are going to receive a message that is X bytes long. In this case, as we can see, the payload contains only one field, which is the nonce field. So we're just going to um, take the length of the nonce. It should be, of course, converted into an integer. And then it should be uh, represented in bytes. It should be four byte long. The byte order should be equal to little endian. And again, it is an unsigned integer. So signed equal to false. In this case, it is quite easy also to see that the payload length will always be eight bytes because in the case of the ping message, there is only the nonce field and the nonce field is always eight byte long. It is also important to notice that the payload size refers only to the size of the payload. We don't care for the size of the header and that is because every message in the Bitcoin protocol, every message that we will send will always contain um, the same type of header, the same four fields. It will always be the same. So we don't really care for the size of the uh, header itself, only for the size of the payload. 
the final field in the header is the checksum field. This field requires the hashlib library, so I will import this library into my code, and I will use it to hash the payload of the message um, using the hashing function SHA-256. And I need to repeat this process twice, once for the payload, and again on the result of the first SHA-256. And after each SHA-256, I also need to digest the result. And this is just something that is required by the Python library. And I will leave a link to the complete uh, documentation in the description below. Also, I just need the first four bytes. So let's just take those four bytes. And the reason why I'm doing this this double hashing is because it will give the payload a unique fingerprint that the remote machine can later use in order to verify that no one try to tamper with the message itself. If someone changes even one bit in the original message, the remote machine will see that it doesn't get the same hashing result. So it will know that this message has been tampered with. Okay, so now that I got all of my fields, I'm just going to uh, construct my final message by placing all of those fields together in the right order. I'm going to start with the header, the magic number, the command name, the payload, uh, payload size, sorry, the checksum, and then the payload itself, which is just the nonce field. And of course, I want to print it out. So let's just print it. And don't forget to convert it into hexadecimal so we can read it. And we can go into our terminal and run this uh, Python pink file. And this is it basically. This hexadecimal string over here, this is our ping message. I can take this message, convert it back into binary and send it to a remote uh, machine on the network. And in the next video, we will see how we can actually establish such communication between myself and another um, node on the network. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.